This module is about the tricarboxylic acid or Krebs cycle. By the 1930s, Hans Krebs knew that organic acids, when added to tissue homogenates in a test tube or in vitro, would stimulate oxygen consumption. The acids were themselves oxidized, and there was a pathway of oxidation in which the number of organic acids were converted one to another. None of these redox reactions directly involved oxidation of the acid by molecular oxygen. So let's take a look at this pathway. Here are the acids, and as they are oxidized, you saw the oxygen slowly disappearing, being consumed. The pathway begins with citric acid and ends with oxaloacetate, whose fate was not known at the time. The pathway is catalyzed by enzymes, obviously. Most, if not all of them, were not identified at the time, so we'll, we'll just call them enzymes 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, and so on. Pyruvate, or one of the end products of glycolysis, what was originally called the emden meyerhoff pathway, which had been discovered earlier, the fate of pyruvate was not known. Some organic acids that are not normally used by cells were also tested in the homogenates, uh, probably just to see what would happen. One of them was malonate. This acid was not oxidized by the homogenates, that is, it didn't disappear. Not only that, it blocked oxygen consumption altogether, so malonic acid is in fact a respiratory poison. Krebs made use of that phenomenon in ultimately elucidating the cycle. So let's look at this slide from the beginning one more time. He showed, Krebs did, that by adding alpha-ketoglutarate or citric acid to these homogenates in the presence of malonate, in other words poisoned homogenates, succinate would accumulate. In other words, citric acid and alpha-ketoglutarate added would be oxidized, but succinic acid would accumulate. And so from this, Krebs concluded that malonic acid was the, the, the mechanism of its poison action was to block the enzyme number three here called later succinic dehydrogenase, the enzyme that would oxidize succinic acid. So malonate is a respiratory poison by virtue of the fact that it blocks succinate dehydrogenase. Malonate is structurally similar to succinate and so is a competitive inhibitor of the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase. Krebs then found something remarkable. If he added fumarate, or malate, or oxaloacetate, now these are three of the acids in this pathway that are past succinic dehydrogenase, succinate would accumulate. Krebs drew the only possible conclusion, namely that the pathway of organic oxidations that he was looking at was not a linear pathway, but was cyclic. And here we see the cyclic pathway. The fate of oxaloacetate then is partially resolved. At least it doesn't have that big question mark after it. Next, Krebs pondered what the cycle would be used for. And he suggested it was a super catalyst. That's a reasonable conclusion. The natural thought process says, oh, this is a, a pointless thing to be doing. Of course, in living things, nothing is pointless. This has evolved for a purpose. And Krebs was wondering what purpose could it have. He thought back a little bit and realized that the end product of glycolysis was oxidized. But nobody knew what the reaction was. So he suggested the TCA cycle was a super catalyst for pyruvate oxidation. Well, to prove this, Krebs did several experiments which meant to test the stoichiometry between each turn of the cycle and the number of pyruvates that would be oxidized. If in fact they were linked, then one turn of the cycle should oxidize one molecule of pyruvate. That's expressed here. In the presence of malonic acid, Krebs reasoned, tissue homogenates should oxidize one molecule or one mole of pyruvate for every mole of succinate that accumulated. Krebs experimentally confirmed this prediction and therefore that the TCA or citric acid cycle was indeed a super catalyst for the oxidation of pyruvic acid. In other words, he would do the experiment and he would show for every mole of pyruvate that he added to the homogenate, a mole of succinate would accumulate. It's in the presence of malonic acid, which would block the reaction from going past succinic acid. At some point later, Krebs's cyclic oxidation pathway was shown to occur in the mitochondrial matrix. So when he was doing his experiments, techniques of cell fractionation hadn't yet been developed, and so it was simply a homogenate of tissues that was doing the reaction, and he didn't really know what part of the cell was doing it. Later we come to know, of course, that the Krebs cycle occurs in the mitochondrion, which means then, of course, pyruvate has to get into the mitochondrion. The enzyme that would be predicted by Krebs' supercatalyst notion for oxidizing pyruvic acid was never found. 